Victor Hugo is, uh, is the topic today, but I'd like to begin uh, by explaining why I'm here, <laughs> and maybe even who I am, because uh, many of you may not know me. I'm an architect uh, for 30 years. I led a practice in London uh, and uh, had the uh, honor and opportunity to design uh, projects in 25 countries on four continents. But the real reason why I'm here is because among those projects, I was the design director for the Winston Churchill Museum and Cabinet War Rooms in Whitehall in London, uh, the, at the British Museum, uh, the architect for the Enlightenment Gallery, which was previously called the King's Library, uh, the British Air Museum at Duxford for the Imperial War Museum, and uh, the Natural History Museum Darwin Center. Uh, so, from these projects, I've learned a bit about, uh, about museums and, uh, and uh, interpretation centers. But perhaps the most important thing I learned was how important they are to the communities where they're located and how valuable they are for the, uh, the long-term success of, uh, of the communities in, in which they, uh, they're located and how much they can bring value uh, real long-term generational value to places. And so for me, the Victor Hugo Center is a, is, is a transformational project for Guernsey. Happily, I'm not working alone on the project. I, uh, I have uh, considerable help. And I just want to uh, give a kind of shout out today to, uh, to my fellow directors we have, uh, uh, who are here with you today. So Gordon Dawes, uh, Isabel Edward, uh, Henry Freeman, Tony Gallian and, uh, and Mark Thompson. And together they bring a, a huge variety of, uh, of experiences uh, and, uh, and great expertise to the project. In addition, we have 25 uh, 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 advisory group members who are also contributing to the project. So we've got a great base and a great set of ambassadors for what we want to do because it's really all about creating uh, uh, something that, that tells the story of Victor Hugo, but does much more than that. It's not just about history, it's about today and tomorrow as well. And with that, I would talk a little bit about Guernsey then and now. Uh, Hugo arrived in 1855. He was 53 years old. Uh, he had not published anything of significance in the previous decade, and yet within a year, he was publishing his most famous work. But when he arrived, the inspirations he found were first and foremost, perhaps, the fascinating people. This was his opportunity to meet people of all, works of li of all walks of life. Because when he was uh, sitting in the Place de Vosges in, uh, in Paris, uh, he met a one strata of society. But in Guernsey, where he was far less well known, he met lots and lots of people. The beautiful landscape and the, uh, and the beauty of the countryside provided inspiration, especially for his poetry, and, and perhaps most especially, the dramatic seascape. Actually, seeing the constantly changing uh, nature of the sea provided him inspiration. And then, what were his concerns in the mid-19th century? Uh, uh, he was, spent a lifetime advocating for human rights, uh, freedom of expression, uh, universal education, the dignity of the individual, and, uh, and penal reform and the abolition of capital punishment. These remain such important topics in our world today, and yet it was, uh, it was here in, uh, in Guernsey that he was, he was sending letters uh, uh, around the world uh, advocating these, uh, these elements of, of Western values in society. But he arrived here actually seeking refuge, not really knowing what he was going to find. But he found far more than refuge. He actually found a home. And for the rest of his life, uh, Hugo and, and Guernsey were a kind of inextricably bound, even to the point where after he returned to Paris after 15 years, uh, he, was, uh, he came back three more times to write his three final novels because he said that uh, a month in Guernsey is the equivalent to a year in Paris uh, for a creative mind. And I think we need to celebrate that. He, he created Hauteville House, which is where he, he 
he, he redid every single bit of the house until it became almost almost a walk through his uh, his mind and his imagination. Uh, I have to say that I probably wouldn't hire him as a decorator myself, but but that doesn't diminish the fact that it is an extraordinary piece of uh, piece of work. And yet, it can only tell one small part of the story of Victor Hugo, because what it is, is it's a total work of art where nothing can be changed. And in the last five years, as all of you, I'm sure, know, uh, the city of Paris and, uh, and, uh, and the, the government uh, of uh, the French government have spent over five million euros restoring Hauteville House uh, to, to its, its pristine quality of when, uh, when he lived there. But it doesn't have all the facilities that you would want to tell the story of Victor Hugo. There's no temporary exhibition space, for instance. There's no place for school children to come. Uh, the, uh, the entry is limited uh, both in terms of six months of the year, but also, also only 30 people an hour because of fire regulations. No one can kind of wander freely and learn about Hugo. It's always a guided tour. So for all these reasons, we believe that we can, we can do so much more to celebrate uh, Guernsey's connection to its most famous resident. And so what we're proposing is a Victor Hugo Center that will be a self-contained, self-sustaining, uh, 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 and inclusive center that will provide for visitors and for the people of Guernsey. It will be a local connection that we celebrate, but also it will have an international audience because Hugo described Guernsey as the rock of hospitality and freedom. And we want to uh, exemplify those words in what we're doing today. And so we've set six key objectives. The first, of course, is to celebrate Victor Hugo's global legacy and specifically the inspiration he found in Guernsey. Our second objective is to enhance Guernsey's tourism, education, and cultural offering, which we can do so well with the Victor Hugo Center. Utilize Victor Hugo's global fame to promote Guernsey worldwide as a home to creativity and talent. We want people to recognize that Guernsey has many, many different qualities, and there's not only the beauty of the place, but it, it provides a place where people can think be inspired and create. We want to provide a study center for school groups and scholars to explore Victor Hugo's life and legacy so that we can invite uh, uh, schools not only from the island but also from France, from the UK and further afield to learn about Hugo and to uh, actually use Hugo as a catalyst to explore their own creativity and, their, and build their own imaginative experiences and record them. To enhance Guernsey's historic and linguistic links with France, Guernsey was for more than a thousand years French, and there is so much that can be done. And particularly in, uh, in the post-Brexit era, where there are kind of sometimes tensions with, uh, with our nearest neighbor, we want to make, make more connections there. And this is a great way to do it and to celebrate Guernsey's, uh, Guernsey's own language. And finally, to complement, as I said, uh, Hauteville House, but provide links globally with museums, universities, and other institutions that share common values with us. So uh, all of these things will help to, to bring more people to the island, not just, uh, not just as a kind of day trips, but, but really to study and learn about it. And so in order to achieve these, uh, these goals, which are admittedly very ambitious, We've designed a center in three parts. You have the Interpretation Center Museum, which will tell that story of an island of inspiration where Hugo came and developed uh, and, and really had a renaissance in his career, largely because of what he found on the island. Second, an interpretation, uh, or second, an exhibition and performance space. This is the space where the creative community in Guernsey today of all sorts can, can explore and, and really promote and share that creativity. It's a place, it's a small kind of intimate, a bijou venue of, of 50 to 60 seats that is very flexible, that allows people to, to, really, to really demonstrate that the inspiration that Hugo found is still inspiring talent and creativity today. And finally, the, uh, the education or study center. 
this place where school children and, uh, and indeed scholars can come and mix with one another, not all the time perhaps from their point of view, but, but it's a place where that can happen. And it's a place where Hugo's, Hugo's fertile imagination can, can be explained and can be, uh, can be shared so that it, it becomes a place really for, uh, for, uh, for, the, uh, for the future, so that the future of the island is developed and, and is shared from across uh, uh, through, through, through student groups. We see the Victor Hugo Center as part of a network of complementary institutions, so it's not just a standalone facility. It's a place, of course, I've mentioned links with Hauteville House and the Museums of Paris, but there are Victor Hugo museums in, uh, in Besançon, in eastern France, in Villequier, in, in uh, Luxembourg, and, and uh, more surprisingly, perhaps, to us, in, uh, in Havana, Cuba. And, uh, and what we want to do is bring these together so that we're, we're sharing resources and, and gaining much more international uh, uh, presence for the, uh, for the center. In terms of other complementary institutions, there's the, uh, the Bonavero Institute of, uh, of Human Rights at, uh, at Oxford University. Cambridge has the uh, Institute of Government and Human Rights. We want to reach out to those places. We are already in dialogue with, uh, with the uh, human rights faculty at the University of Essex because these are shared values and through shared values we can collaborate and create a, a, a worldwide community that has a, uh, has a focus in Guernsey. But that focus in Guernsey means that the center will become a kind of gateway for, uh, for people to explore and understand Guernsey. Uh, because when they come there, they will not only be told about Victor Hugo's house up, up the road, they'll be told about uh, his statue and, uh, and, and uh, two statues now, of course, but uh, perhaps more, I hope. Uh, but as a gateway attraction, the whole purpose of the center is to introduce Guernsey uh, uh, to, uh, to, to visitors and to the people of Guernsey alike so that they actually learn to, uh, to discover and explore how much we have to offer here. The museum themes will be in four parts, the, the man himself, Hugo in Guernsey so that we actually recognize uh, uh, the friends, the connections he made. Uh, uh, many of those connections are still kept alive today in Guernsey families, uh, uh, people who have have great grand, great 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 grand, who for whom he, uh, for his great great grandfather was a friend of theirs. I went recently to the Prio Library to do some research, and one of the young librarians uh, came up to me and said, "Oh, you know, I just want to mention that my great great grandfather was his barber," <laughs> and and so and so these are the kinds of stories we want to discover and uh, and highlight. And finally, finally, the inspiration Guernsey provided and the living legacy of, of Hugo, because Hugo's legacy is one that is constantly reinterpreted for every generation. So the way that the center will be organized will be a, a series of galleries, with the central focus being the gallery that talks about Hugo and, uh, and, and Guernsey. This, uh, this, this kind of almost symbiotic relationship where Hugo found so much uh, to, uh, uh, to give him new creativity and, uh, and, and fire his imagination. Surrounding that central gallery of, uh, of, again, of Guernsey and Hugo will be a series of individual galleries that will drill down into more detail about various aspects, various important aspects of, uh, of Hugo's life and work. The focus of that central gallery, the story of Hugo and Guernsey, will be a large-scale physical model of the island, but a physical model with built-in intelligence, so that through electronics uh, uh, it will become a very interactive, uh, interactive facility where people can come and, and interrogate the model, basically ask, where did uh, Hugo swim? And, uh, and, and Havilit and, uh, and Fermain will light up, so in, immediately they're invited to go, go out and see that. Or where did uh, where did Hugo picnic and uh, and Moulin Wet will light up and we have we have someone who who actually has the uh, has the Moulin controls the little place where he used to have tea in Moulin Wet in the room today. Um, 
these things, he took 350 carriage rides around the island and he was an inveterate diarist. And so we know all the things he did to explore the island and that all of that will be built into the model so that we, he, you can ask the model, uh, uh, you know, where was the haunted house that, that we read about in Toilers of the Sea? And uh, you'll find the haunted house. So it, it is a fantastic opportunity. But the opportunity doesn't stop with the physical model because the physical model will then be surrounded by, by large scale screens uh, uh, that will be projecting uh, the sea around Guernsey so that, so that you have the sense of the immersive experience of almost standing on the shore of, the, uh, of, of our island and seeing the sea around you so that people begin to recognize why it was that, that Hugo chose to, to build the lookout at the top of Hauteville House so that he could stand looking out to sea as he, uh, as he wrote. But the sea is ever changing and that's what so captivated Hugo. So every few minutes, the blue skies and calm waters will turn into, uh, into, the, into the, the waves and the crashing sounds of, uh, of thunder and lightning as, as the storms come over the island. And of course, you know, we who live here know that that doesn't happen very often, that we get storms or gales, but, but it does. And, and we want to, to show how that works. And that will then give way, that will then give way to what we call the psychological mode, where, where the island of inspiration becomes also at the same time the rock of exile, because he was in exile, he was away from, uh, from his beloved France, and, but he created, but it, it made him more creative. He created uh, thousands of pieces of art that, uh, that he, uh, exploring the island, and the art tells you so much more about his mind and his mindset, and so his own art will be projected in this immersive experience. And then from this central feature, from this uh, exciting, uh, 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 immersive and interactive uh, uh, room, there'll be a series of galleries that open up around you. You have uh, uh, family fr and friends, and, uh, and his muse and mistress, Juliette Drouet, is one of those examples. And here, for instance, we would, uh, we would create a, uh, a, a miniature doll's house of Hauteville House so that the people who can't make it, you know, either they physically don't want to go up the hill or it's the wrong time of year or, or for whatever reason they can't make it to Hauteville House, they get a, a, an introduction to it and they have a taste of it and a taste of it in a way that makes them curious. Because more than anything else, Hugo was a man of intense curiosity. He was curious about everything in the world. That's, that's why you know, he, he, went, uh, he went down to the docks most days to talk not just to the shipbuilders, but also to, uh, to the stevedores to learn what they were unloading, how that worked. He went up to, uh, uh, to, the, uh, uh, to, to, up to St. Samson's to, to, learn about, to learn about shipbuilding from the shipwrights you know, all of which uh, appears then in Toilers of the Sea because he was not only curious, but he actually, uh, unlike me sometimes, remembered what he learned. And so that, uh, that is fantastic as well. Then you have, uh, you have uh, the poet, writer, and artist. You know, the things for which he's best known in France, perhaps he's better known as a poet than he is as, uh, as a novelist. And yet here we know him, uh, especially from the third gallery, from Les Miserables, the kind of creation of, uh, of Les Miserables, how the story came about and, uh, and what it reflected. And then the Toilers of the Sea, you know, the, the, the most Guernsey of all of his books, although I, I would argue Guernsey appears in many of his, uh, many of his uh, works. But uh, the story of Toilers of the Sea, again, encouraging people through the exhibitions to go out and see the real physical places because that's what's so nice about Guernsey and something that his great-great-grandson, Jean-Baptiste Hugo, has, uh, has, has said to me, which is that anyone who is serious about knowing Victor Hugo has to spend time in Guernsey because it's the one place where they can actually see the same things he saw and uh, they can experience the, his experiences. So, so Toilers of the Sea is very important. And then a gallery devoted to the reformer and social advocate, 
uh, his many uh, his many uh, campaigns, which uh, which will be celebrated actually this uh, this uh, this June uh, for the Vic at the Victor Hugo weekend, which I'll mention a little bit more about. And finally, the living legacy, the legacy uh, a gallery talking about how Hugo is as important today because his ideas live on. His, uh, his, his novels live on long before he, uh, long after he has gone. And that legacy is really, as I say, a twofold legacy because it's the legacy of the, the writer and the artist. Uh, but he was, he, unlike so many writers, he actually wrote in so many different ways. He was a novelist, a poet, an essayist. Uh, he, uh, he was a dramatist and was in his early career known much more for, uh, for, his, uh, for his theatrical works. And he was, of course, the artist, uh, uh, his work here particularly, which has a kind of proto-modern feeling about it because he was, again, through his curiosity, he was always exper experimenting with different forms of, uh, of painting and art. All of these things really represent the kind of the global approach to him and, and the fact that every generation is able to reinterpret his works uh, so that you had in the 19th century 11 operas uh, based on Victor Hugo works because opera was the most popular form of entertainment at the time. In the early 20th century, uh, uh, cinema adop adopted Hugo and you had uh, uh, The Hunchback of Notre Dame, the silent film, and then three more versions uh, uh, in, in talkies. Uh, the same is true of Toilers of the Sea. That has been adapted several times, as has Les Miserables. And then in the latter part of the 20th century, the way in which most, uh, most people of the English-speaking world know him, uh, through the musicals, because it's not just the musical of Les Miserables, which, uh, which is, uh, has been produced now in 45 countries to, uh, to huge uh, sellout audiences, but in, uh, in Seoul, in South Korea right now, the most popular musical is, is based on his novel, The Man Who Laughs. And so wherever you go in the world, you come across Hugo, and we want to bring that, we want to bring those people who are interested in Hugo to Guernsey to see where he found that creative inspiration. Equally important, though, is, is, this, is the second part of the legacy. And that, as I say, is the legacy as an advocate and an influencer. Uh, uh, much is made today of, uh, of, uh, of kind of global influencers using the internet. Uh, I've come to believe that Hugo was probably one of the world's, if not the world's first global influencer because he was constantly publishing open letters to, uh, to the, uh, uh, that he would send around the world to newspapers. And so his ideas, his, uh, his thoughts, and his, through the novels, they, they, were, they were spread around the world. But, you know, human rights, uh, freedom of expression, uh, you know, freedom of expression, we, we see what's happening in, uh, in China, in, uh, in various countries in, uh, well, really all over the world where, where the press is suppressed. Uh, in human rights, even in my own uh, my own native America, there are times now when when the question of human rights is uh, it has to be debated. Uh, universal education: What's happening in Afghanistan, where where women simply because uh, of their birth are denied the right to an education? Penal reform and capital punishment: The dignity of the individual. All of these are powerful stories that are as important in the 21st century as they were in Hugo's time. And we have the opportunity to really promote and celebrate those ideas and share them with people. And one of the ways we'll do that is through the, uh, through the study center. The study center will be a place where we have a library of Hugo's works, where we encourage young people to, 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 to well, at the very, at the most basic, to read, to uh, to read and find out the worlds that are available if you uh, if you simply read, and then to uh, to actually encourage them and spur them on to not just read other people's work, to, but to create their own, to create their own poetry, to create their own stories, to find the ways to unlock their imaginations, because there is there is nothing richer than a than a child's imagination, and so. That will be there as well as the possibility for, for researchers who come to learn about Hugo, a place where they can, they can settle down and, uh, and, and study and learn more in, a, uh, in an atmosphere that is celebrating and, uh, and telling about what Hugo is and does.
And finally, the virtual are the, uh, uh, the, the versatile home for creativity, uh, a place where there is so much that goes on on the island and sometimes not enough recognition uh, and, uh, and promotion of it. And so the, this home of creativity, as I call it, is it's a flexible space. It's, uh, it's a room that seats 50 to 60 people uh, that can be used for temporary exhibitions, uh, us bringing some to the island, sometimes creating our own, uh, performance spaces and meeting spaces where film and, uh, and, and poetry readings, where lectures and about literature and, uh, and the creation of literature can occur. And it's, it's something that is really filling a void that we have. And that is the void of, of this kind of intimate space where we, can, where we can talk about and share ideas and share uh, 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 talents. So, you know, in terms of, of who could use it, uh, it's, you know, the, the uh, school's music service. Uh, Tim Wright has said that for, for quartets or quintets, for small groups and, uh, and soloists, there isn't a space that provides that right now because uh, St. James is too big and too expensive. Uh, uh, you, you don't go to Beau Sejour for this kind of thing. And, uh, and so it, it fills a need uh, for in the community. But it's uh, also the Guernsey Literary Festival. Claire Allen has said how wonderful it would be to have a place that's dedicated to, uh, to someone who is a writer and uh, a, a creator, to have that as a place where we can have, uh, have literary festival events. Uh, the, uh, uh, the international poetry competition that's part of that, uh, the festival, you know, this would be a place where one of the great poets of, uh, of, West, of, of Europe uh, uh, is, is, is recognized, remembered, and new poetry is, uh, is shared. Or uh, the, uh, the Photographic Club. Many people don't realize that uh, Hugo was one of, uh, an early proponent of photography and had his own darkroom in Hauteville House where he developed his, uh, his photography. And so that too is something that is, again, related to him. Uh, the French Film Nights uh, uh, and and of course the Victor Hugo and Guernsey Society, which uh, uh, is fundamentally dedicated to promoting Victor Hugo, and that's where I have uh, I have included just to just to say that you know what we're doing is going to take time and uh, time and a lot of support and help from you, but you can get involved with Victor Hugo right now this June because of the uh, the Victor Hugo uh, uh, weekend, which celebrates Victor Hugo and brings internationally respected and uh, recognized uh, uh, scholars uh, to spend a weekend sharing and talking about aspects of Victor Hugo. This year, it will be about his advocacy and all of the many, many things that, uh, that he believed in. So that is something to consider as well. Finally, how are we going to do it? Well, we have been able to, uh, to appoint uh, uh, really creative designers. I've been talking about Guernsey as an island of inspiration, and I think we have, working with us, some of the most inspired uh, young talent. Uh, David Delamere at DLM Architects is, uh, is leading the, uh, the architectural design, working with Dory Lyle and Ashman. The two practices uh, just recently delivered uh, uh, the outstanding success that is the, uh, the renovation and rehabilitation of the, uh, of the Lavalette bathing pools. And so this is another opportunity to show what that creative talent can do. And we've paired them with Cass and Mann, who are uh, exhibition designers. I worked with Cass and Mann first uh, to create the Winston Churchill Museum and the Cabinet War Rooms in London. They're internationally recognized exhibition designers whose, uh, whose projects uh, range from uh, the Ben Franklin uh, Museum in the USA uh, to, uh, uh, to the uh, uh, Cité du Vin in Bordeaux. And what they bring is, uh, is a massive background in, uh, in creating world-recognized uh, uh, exemplary uh, 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 exhibition centers and, uh, uh, well, uh, interpretation centers and museums. And so this combination, again, of the, of, the, of the local talent paired with international experience is something that I think is going to be a really powerful advantage for us. And the Victor Hugo Center, uh, last September it was announced that uh, uh, an in-principle agreement uh, from uh, uh, the states that they will provide us with 
uh, what they refer to as the former state's offices, what most people call the information center, as, uh, as a building that can be converted into the center. Uh, it's a building that, uh, that will work extremely well, a fantastic location, and, uh, and a recognized building that, uh, that deserves a better use because, well, a better use. It works very well as the, uh, as the information center. However, uh, the information center only uses about a quarter of the building. The rest of it is, uh, is the uh, uh, probation service, which may not be the best combination or the best location. So I think it's a fantastic opportunity. Uh, it is also a building that curiously has a French connection. Uh, when the building was designed in 1911, it was an extremely progressive design. The whole building is built in reinforced concrete and no Guernsey builder knew how to do that. And so the states uh, hired a, a French contractor to come over and, and build the building. So it actually was built by French contractors, but as these, as, as these things go, about two thirds of the way, three quarters of the way through the project, uh, they, uh, uh, the, the builders uh, had a dispute with the states and downed tools and went back to France. So, <laughs> so it was actually finished by Guernsey builders. So again, it, it has that international and local combination. But you know, we want to preserve the, the kind of iconic uh, uh, imagery uh, facing, uh, facing the seafront and yet also enliven and create something new in the building. So that on the, gr on the ground floor, uh, will be the Exhibition Interpretation Center. On the first floor, the, perf uh, the uh, uh, museum, uh, and, uh, uh, and on, the, uh, on the third floor will be the, uh, this is, the slide has changed here. <laughs> it's, it's new to me too. <laughs> uh, the third floor will be the, uh, the study center. So that the building works very well. And of course, one of my themes today has been the international and the local, bringing these two together to really celebrate Guernsey on, uh, on the global stage. Again, Les Miserables has, uh, has, drawn, has drawn sellout audiences in 45 countries. Wouldn't it be great if some of those people knew where Les Miserables was published from? Wouldn't it be wonderful if those people thought, well, we should go see where, what, what inspired him? Um, and in, in even, even the most kind of prosaic, Disney's film of The Hunchback of Notre Dame uh, Ray, you know, it, it made over 700 million pounds for Disney, uh, and, uh, and that was just a cartoon. So, you know, we have the physical artifacts, we have the authentic buildings, so we should be using those to celebrate it. And so that's why, you know, the Victor Hugo Center is all about being a, 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 a place that celebrates Guernsey and its most famous resident, Hugo, but recognizes that it's not a story in the past, it's an ongoing story for today and tomorrow. And therefore, the center has to do that. And so we also anticipate, uh, uh, having been successful in creating the center, creating scholarships and grants in, in three of the categories very important to Hugo, and that's literature, uh, theater, and human rights, so that we can, we can actually have an ongoing way to publicize what we do. The Hugo Center is a, going to be a gateway attraction and, uh, and an international focal point to really focus interest on, on Guernsey and, uh, and, and Hugo's life and legacy. And at the same time, it's a celebration of Guernsey's history with Victor Hugo, but also, and I think very importantly, a confident investment in Guernsey's future to say that the talent, the creativity, the young minds on the island uh, have, have great potential and we want to help exploit that potential. Hugo himself said, there's nothing like a dream to create the future. And so my plea to you today is get involved, help us. Help us and, uh, and actually, actually help create something that will be for generations to come, a place where people can, uh, can learn can, uh, uh, can, uh, can enjoy themselves, but also can, uh, can celebrate the island and, uh, and a very important part of it. So, so make a difference in Guernsey and, uh, and, uh, and help us make this dream a reality. Thank you very much.